Hello, pet parents. Welcome to our first Facebook Live broadcast. Nandito tayo ngayon sa Better Dog K9 Behavior Center sa Pasong Tamo in Makati City. If you didn't know, this is not only a training center for dogs, but also a salon and hotel para sa inyong pinakamamahal na fur babies. You can check out the website after our live broadcast at betterdogph.com. We at Pet Parenting PH are very excited to start off our live session. So please feel free to share this video and tag your friends below. Mas lalo yung mga friends that have dogs and need training. Okay, I'd like to introduce our speaker, Mr. Jojo Isorena. He's the CEO of Better Dog. He is a U.S. Certified Dog Training and Behavior Specialist and is here to give you the basics of pet parenting. Today's topics that he'll cover are potty training and crate training. May Q&A portion mamaya, so please feel free to post your questions below. Without further ado, here's Sir Jojo. Sir, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Gabby. Uh, hello, welcome to everybody. Thank you for tuning in to the first live broadcast of uh, Pet Parenting PH. Uh, we hope you can pick up a few things uh, about uh, pet parenthood uh, in today's uh, live broadcast. Uh, pet, uh, pet parenting can be very, very challenging. No? And one of the most challenging things about uh, getting a dog or any, any pet is is toilet training. So this is the reason why toilet training is the first topic that we're going to be dealing with for today. Um, before we go into that, uh, it's important I think that you understand a uh, couple of things. No? First, I'd like to get the point across that uh, toilet training is not rocket science. No? It's actually very easy. It's uh, it's very simple and it, a lot of it involves common sense. No? If you get a puppy from a good breeder, because toilet training actually begins with a dam of the dog. Many people don't know this, but when you pick up your puppy from the breeder or from, the, from wherever you acquired it at eight weeks, your puppy has, was, has already been toilet trained by its mom. It begins at around uh, er earlier than for weeks of age. You know, the, the mom already uh, teaches the puppy where to go and that's away from where it's sleeping, away from the sleeping areas. Now unfortunately many breeders, uh, many people who breed dogs and puppies, they don't know this. They don't know that sometimes the dam is bred too early uh, and when the way they set up their, the whelping box is not uh, well suited to toilet training for the dam, no? But again, please believe me when I tell you, it's an awesome sight when you see the dam uh, toilet training its puppies at around four, four to six weeks. Um, so that's the first thing I needed to get across. But when you take your puppy home, you need to restart toilet training because it's a totally new environment for the puppy. And what you really need to do, all you really need to do, is to tell the puppy where the bathroom is, okay? So, when, uh, when you take your puppy home, and this is what happens a lot of the time, you bring your puppy home, you walk through the door, and everybody's so excited about having a puppy, and then they put the puppy down, and you know, this little puppy is, is in this new place with all these huge humans all around him, and they're all fussing all over him, and of course, that puppy is gonna feel very, very anxious. And when it feels anxious, it's going to want to go to the bathroom. And because you placed it in your living room, where there's the carpet, you know, you have your nice flooring, the puppy feels anxious and has an accident in the living room. From that point on, the puppy starts to believe that the bathroom is your living room. Because that, that little puddle of pee that your puppy left, the scent of that is going to stay there uh, for quite a long time unless you clean it up properly and the way to clean it up is uh, the only thing that can clean up that scent is vinegar and water there are some uh, commercial uh, products that are already available but the best for us is still vinegar and water no? so anyway again going back when your puppy when you bring your puppy home uh, for the very very first time the first place that you should take him to is to the bathroom 
it's very similar to you when you go to a new place, when you go to a new venue, to a theater. Sometimes you feel this anxiety and you want to go to the bathroom. So the puppy is feeling exactly the same thing. And what you need to do is, before you walk in the door, take that puppy to the bathroom. Okay? For a puppy, for dogs, the default bathroom is either grass or soil. It has the smell of soil and it has the feel of grass on its back. Okay, so the smell of soil and the feel of grass. Once those two conditions are there, or at least one of those conditions is there, the puppy is probably going to go. So just to give you a little demo, I have a little puppy today, and uh, her name is Paris. I'm gonna, can, you, can you bring in Paris over here? Okay, let me, okay. So this is Paris. Paris is a three months old, uh, old English sheep dog. And she just woke up for a minute. Okay? So what we're gonna do is while 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 I show you the intricacies of toilet training a puppy, I'm going to be holding Paris. Now uh, over here, one of the first things you need when you start toilet training is uh, we call this a play pen. Now it's really just a foldable enclosure uh, that will allow you to keep the puppy in one place. Okay? Because again, one of the biggest mistakes people make when they bring a puppy home is they put it down and they let the puppy roam all over the place. And when you let the puppy roam all over the place, it's just going to have accidents all over the place. So in the beginning, when you, in the first few weeks of your puppy's uh, stay in your home, you need to keep your puppy only in a limited area. And the best way to limit your puppy's area is to use this foldable Play pen. So you can do it like this, or you can set it up against the wall, like this. And you see by the this. Yeah, so if you set it up this way, then you have a bigger space for your puppy to walk around. You can set this up in any corner of your house. Then, the other thing you're going to need is the surface, right? I was talking about surface. So, Fortunately, today we have products like this. These are wee wee pads that are scented pads for your dogs to pee on. No? They're disposable and oh, it's got a hole in it already. But it's uh, it's not that expensive. I think for eight pieces, it could probably probably cost you about 140 pesos. So you have to in your playpen, you have to put an area where the puppy can go. Uh, Elsie, you wanna help me? So you wanna, okay, you wanna put it maybe on one side of the pen, away from the area where you want your puppy to sleep. So here you put it there, and that's where the puppy is gonna go when it feels like going to the bathroom. It has to feel the softness, the softness that it will feel in its palate, it's scented, so it feels like grass. Now if you can't, if you don't have access to this, you can almost, almost you can always use. Uh, newspaper, okay? Any newspaper, okay? It's better if you get the one that has bad news, <laughs> then it will make, really make the puppy go. But just a sheet like this is enough now, because the reason why is because most breeders, at least here in the Philippines, they start off their puppies on newspaper. So when you put newspaper, when you use newspaper, the puppy quickly recognizes it as the bad. Okay, but for today, because we are here on Facebook, we're using something a little more sophisticated. We're using a wee wee pad. And so I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put Paris in my pen. And hopefully when Paris goes, I'm going to tell her, go party, go party. I hope she doesn't go where the plants are. Uh, she's gonna go where the pad is. And there you go. Wow. Wow, right on target. Can you imagine? Ooh. Success! <laughs> and of course, when your when your dog goes and does it in the right place, we always give a treat. We always give a treat, maybe one or two pieces, to let her know that she did the right thing. Right? Okay, 
And then once she's done her business, then you can take her out. Excuse me. Okay. Then you can take her out. And the really, really big reward is that she now gets to play wherever she wants. So the rule for you is you only take your puppy out of the pen when you know that your puppy has gone to the bathroom. That's the only time that the puppy is allowed anywhere in the house. No? Of course, uh, there's some, so there are certain considerations. Number one, uh, before you allow your, you don't really want to allow your puppy in the garden if your puppy's vaccinations are not yet complete. Your puppy should have at least two sets of the five-in-one vaccination before you allow it in the garden. The vets will, will be pulling their hair in that one. But <clears throat> I allow my puppies, uh, after two weeks of the second vaccine, I allow them in the garden because I really want them to go to the garden as soon as possible. I want to transition them very, very quickly from the wee wee pad or the newspaper to the garden because that's so much more convenient. Okay? So, first, first thing you need again to give you a summary you need a playpen to keep your puppy isolated from the rest of the house and that accidents are limited only within this area. Number two, you need a surface. You need uh, either a wee pad or a newspaper for your puppy to go to. Uh, and I think I put in plants here just to make it a little easier for the dog to smell so well. Uh, and then of course you need a puppy. You need a puppy. You need... This is Paris. Yeah. And she's, she's earned her keep for today. Okay. So Elsie, can you come get Paris as I continue with my talk? Thanks, All right. Good girl. Okay. <clears throat> so... Surface is very important. That's number one, surface, no? Number two is a schedule. You really need to uh, keep track of your puppy's pottying schedule. And there's two, two types of pottying. There's wee-wee and there's poo-poo, right? Poo-poo is easy because that's only, if you feed your puppy two or three times a day, it will make poo-poo only two or three times a day unless it has something wrong with it medically. But it's the wee wee because you constantly have to have water with your puppy. Um, the puppy is going to be going initially when it's about two or three months. It'll probably go every 30 minutes. That's why when you set your puppy up in the pen, the bathroom always has to be accessible. And that's really where we mess up with our toilet training because we never consider when the puppy has to go. We're always just waiting and waiting for us to remember when my puppy has to go. Well, if you are really serious about toilet training, just as we are, we are professionals, um, we don't wait for the puppy to go. We tell the puppy to go. We are aware of our puppy's schedule. So at about two or three months, it'll probably go every 30 minutes. You know? A little older than that, maybe three or four months, maybe an hour or every two hours. And then at older than that, maybe every three hours. So even at, uh, when a puppy is an adult, it will, you need to take it out every three or four hours, regularly. No? That's on schedule. So whether it's peeing or pooping, you need to give your puppy or your dog the opportunity to go out and do its business outside. Okay? Now, <clears throat> every time your dog, again, even when you're you have an older dog, every time it does its business in the right place, it's always good to reward your dog for that, for getting it right. No? Uh, and then there are other times, aside from uh, every three or four hours, taking your dog out every three or four hours round the clock, okay? Let me just wipe my hands. <laughs> okay, it's getting hot. So, aside from taking your dog out every three or four hours, we need to uh, be aware of other instances when the pet will have to go. First is, after eating or drinking, your puppy is going to want to go. Usually about 10 to 15 minutes after eating or drinking, most puppies need to go to the bathroom. So after feeding your puppy, wait five or 10 minutes to bring it out to the garden or bring it to the wee-wee area. Eating or drinking, no? Second is when 
you play with your puppy when the puppy's been running around. See, running around causes it to want to go. So you'll notice that once in a while, or most of the accidents happen in the middle of play, when the puppy is running, running, running. Then you'll see it'll stop, and then it'll start looking around. It'll break off from the play. It'll look for some quiet corner and then do his business. Okay, so you have to be aware of that because during play all, or after play, it's also a time to take your puppy to the potty area. Uh, the third is, when you arrive in a new place, let's say, you know, we've been traveling a lot with our pets lately, so whenever you arrive in a new place, whenever you take your puppy to the vet or to the, the park, right, the first thing, the very first thing you need to do is take your puppy to a, a potty area. No, again, grass or soil. If you don't have grass or soil, then bring along your wee wee pad or bring along some newspaper, put it on, put it on the ground, and let your puppy go there. But that's the very, very first thing. So that when you go inside the mall or when you go inside the vet clinic, your puppy will not have an accident because it has already gone outside. Okay? So always bring your puppy to the bathroom before you enter any new place because he's going to feel anxious and he's going to want to go. Okay? Um, now when you do, just a little note, now when you do take your puppy to potty in a public place, go to somewhere quiet, go somewhere where people don't see. Now because a lot of people, I've seen a lot of people who get grossed out when they see puppies or dogs doing their business out in the open. So uh, being a good or responsible pet owner, what you want to do is you want to uh, potty your puppy or your dog but away from the public eye okay away from the public eye so at the same time your puppy has some privacy just like yourself you also want some privacy when you do your business right beside you I know some people there but yeah you want some privacy so take your puppy to a nice quiet corner where people won't see all right so <clears throat> schedule uh, ah, okay sorry part of schedule is uh, the time when your puppy is most likely going to go to the bathroom is when it wakes up from sleep or when it wakes up from a nap. So the best time or the best chance for you to catch your puppy doing something right during your toilet training is when it wakes up first thing in the morning. And this is what a lot of people find very, very difficult to do, especially when they have a young puppy. Now when the puppy is about two months, right, uh, it wakes up very early wakes up at around 3 or 4 in the morning. You're lucky if your puppy wakes up at 5, but 3 or 4 in the morning, you have to get up. In fact, you have to catch your puppy as soon as it wakes up and immediately take him to the bathroom. So if you are unable to do that, then I suggest putting a wee-wee pad in your puppy's playpen. Okay, so waking up in the morning or waking, waking up from a nap, always take your puppy to the potty area. Okay? Okay, also, lastly, your puppy also wants to go, or your dog, your adult dog, usually feels anxious whenever you have guests. When they come over to your house, right, they get anxious when there's a new person in the house, and they usually want to go. So what I do is, with my older dogs, whenever there's a, somebody at the door, I go take my dog, I take him out, I meet the guest outside, where I can potty my dog, and then once my dog has potty, then both of then the guest goes in and the dog goes in and my puppy is nice and relaxed. Okay, so that's how to set my puppy up for success. Okay, so uh, surface, schedule, and then lastly, supervision. Okay, when we dog trainers potty train our puppy, we want our puppy, like I said, we don't wait for our puppy to go, we tell our puppy to go. And how do we tell our puppy to go? We teach them to go on command. So with my puppy, what I, with my dog, I use uh, go potty. Some people they use hurry up. Some people they say do your business. Whatever it is. Um, whatever it is, you just have to use that command over and over so that the puppy learns it. No? Um, uh, this is something a lot of dog trainers don't know, but there is what's called the rule of 5,000. If you repeat something 5,000 times, the dog is likely to learn it. So that's what we use in this particular case. 
Um, I think I'm going to get, is uh, fudge there? Fudge? Is fudge there? Not yet. You can ask them to get fudge now. Okay, so, uh, yeah, the rule of 5,000. No? Um, every time you take your puppy out, every time you, you take your puppy to the bathroom, you must always, one, be ready with treats to give your dog so that when he does it, he does it correctly, you get, give him a reward. Second, um, you need to be there uh, so you can say your command, go potty, go potty. As you put in there, you're saying go potty, go potty, go potty. No? Uh, and then that, that he connects the words go potty with doing his business. So then he learns the meaning of the word, the words go potty. Um, lastly, if you are really going to be diligent about um, knowing your puppy's potty schedule, then uh, you need to know what time was your puppy last when. No? You need to know the time. So uh, some people, you know, they're cooking in the kitchen or they're do working on their computer and then they let their dog out in the garden, but they don't really go with their dog. They just let the dog go out. And they didn't really see if the puppy went or the dog went or not. So what happens is the dog goes out there, he starts playing around, running around, and then after, after maybe 10 or 15 minutes, they let the dog in and they re the dog realizes, oh my God, I forgot to potty, and he potties inside the house. He has an accident inside the house. So that's, that's another reason why we mess up we mess up our dogs because we don't supervise them when we when they find the dogs also need to learn to do it when you're there and i'm going to go back to that later because my dog fudge is here ready and i'm going to see if fudge is very very fudge is for the train hang on hang on hold it there hold it away from me first so i set up this little potty area this is where my dog went uh, this is where Paris went. So I'm going to show you Fudge. Go party. Go party. Come on. Go party. Go party. Go party. Come on. Fudge, come here. I hope this works. Go party. Go party. Come on, Fudge. Go party. Go party. So I keep him only in one place. Go party. Go party, Fudge. Come on. Party. I think he's jotting because there's people watching. The whole world is watching. Go party. Go party, come on. Go party. You see? He knows it because you see, whenever I say go potty, you'll see that he'll lower his nose and he'll sniff. And if he lowers his nose and he doesn't have to go, then he lets me know by lifting it and then walking, walking around here. Let's give him. So I'll spend only this much time when I take my dog out. Go potty, touch. Touch, go potty. That potty will not happen. Be back. Come on, touch. Touchy, come here. Go no, he doesn't have to go. When he decides to leave that, he doesn't have to go. But maybe if I take him outside. Can go outside? We can go outside? Yes. Okay, come on, let's go. Let's take him outside. Just so the people will see. I'm gonna go over there, okay? Mm -hmm. Or you can go here and okay. come. Fudgy, come on. go potty. Go potty. And there you go. So he really had to go. Okay, that's it. And then we're done. So by this time, since Fudge is Fudge is nine years old, I don't need to reward him but because he knows. Okay, one dog, take him off. There you go.
I saw it right here. Okay. <laughs> Fantastic, this Facebook thing. <laughs> anyway, yeah. The dog really has to know how to do his business in your presence. No? And I think my last message to you is, whenever your puppy has an accident as a puppy, accidents will happen, right? Accidents happen because people forget, right? But when an accident happens, when your puppy has an accident inside the house, please, please do not put your puppy's nose in his pee or in his poop, okay? That's really old, old school. It doesn't work, okay? It doesn't work. Your puppy starts to think that you're some crazy, crazy guy that likes to put his nose in his pee, right? But if your puppy has an accident, uh, you don't scream, do not shout. See, most people will react to it. Ah! Right? And that really freaks the dogs out. And what will happen is that they don't learn, or they'll, maybe they'll punish the dog, right? They don't learn not to pee inside the house. What they learn is not to pee in your presence. Because what they learn is that, boy, this guy really loses it whenever I pee. So they won't pee. Whenever you're around, they'll find some corner in your house and do it there. Okay? So please, when your puppy has an accident, don't do anything. Don't try to catch the puppy and bring him out because that'll, that'll make it worse. You pop, you in midway, midstream, you pick up your puppy, run out, you have pee all over your house, right? Or you have poop all over. So if you see that he's doing it already, let him do it. Let him finish and then just go find something to clean it with and then charge a food experience. Okay? Does that make sense? Okay, so I hope uh, I've, uh, just to summarize, no? Surface, puppies will go where there is the smell of soil or the feel of grass on their feet. Um, make, go to the same potty area every time. Number two, schedule. Know your puppy's schedule and take him to the potty area when it's about time for him to go. Do not wait till your puppy is telling you to go. You have to be the one to tell your puppy to go. And number three, right? Supervise. Be there so you can see that your puppy actually went and so that you can reward your puppy for doing something good. Okay? That's it for toilet training. That's it for toilet training. Gabby? Yeah, we have, uh, there's one question. Oh, okay. Wow. We got uh, questions. So I think this might, this might be applicable to some of the other people who, whose dogs are probably not puppies. So, Krisha asks, so she has a two-year-old Shih Tzu um, who's used to peeing and pooping at rags. So is it too late to on toilet rags. train her? On rags. On rags, yes. On is it too rags. late to toilet train no. a two-year-old Shih Tzu? Okay. It's never too late to toilet train your Shih Tzu. In fact, throughout a dog's life that's like 15 years right you're gonna be moving you're not gonna be staying in one house you're gonna be moving maybe you move twice in in the puppy's lifetime and every time you move you you need to go back to toilet training toilet training is something that can you, you can always redo because all it is is simply telling the puppy where the bathroom is or where the new bathroom is and rewarding him when he finds it that's that's all it is now, on, your dog is already peeing on rags. Um, yeah, that's okay. It's okay to pee on rags. In fact, one of the things that I use, instead of a wee-wee pad, because a wee-wee pad, you know, syempre, it costs money. But, uh, yeah, see, June, June, nasan yung pad? Yung carpet, yung, yeah. <laughs> oh, it is really dirty. <laughs> but I use one of these. I'm sure you guys are familiar with this. This is just a doormat. It's one of the cheap doormats that you can buy in the grocery. And I actually use this instead of a wee wee pad. So instead of the rags that you're using, you can switch to this and then later on switch to what if you want to transition to newspaper, you can put that on the floor because your puppy is used to it. And then put the newspaper on top of it. And then when your puppy is doing it on newspaper, then you take out the doormat from underneath and you're just working on newspaper. Thank you, KP. Thank you. Okay, so that's how to transition. You can't you can transition uh, just like that, but you have to slowly move, ease your puppy into the new surface. Okay, what else? Uh, I don't know if this is related, but some, someone asked if 
how to get their dogs to stop barking at visitors when they arrive. It might, might be related to what ah, you mentioned about okay. How to stop, stop barking at visitors. Yes. Okay. So, um, yeah, this happens a lot, especially to people that live in condos. No? Um, there's a few things you need to be aware of. No? Dogs have a natural defensive instinct. No? They have, it's in, instinctive for them that once they bond to their home, this is their home and anybody that enters who is not part of that home is a potential threat and they will feel very threatened by this either human or another dog that enters their territory and part of uh, the, the way they deal with it is they bark no uh, a lot of people don't understand what barking means a dog is barking at a human or another dog because what it's saying is that you they want that human or dog to go away the purpose of barking is to actually tell to put distance between the dog and the threat whether it's human or another dog so when the dog is barking at the visitor he's just telling him go away go away go away and that's perfectly natural now uh, at a certain age uh, usually at around a year old all dogs will go through what we call the second fear imprint period and uh, this is usually the time when they start learning to bark at the sound of the doorbell now they know that there's somebody there oh there's a threat so immediately they go into a fearful state and when they hear the doorbell they bark the doorbell actually becomes a cue for them to start barking so what we do when we deal with something like this is we teach a dog uh, a new behavior uh, an alternative behavior that uh, that is more appropriate more acceptable what the dog has learned is that whenever the doorbell rings or whenever there's a visitor at the door it's learned that the behavior that he's going to go into is to bark 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 or maybe even lunge at the door that's just a, a recorded behavior because he does it every time he hears the doorbell so what we do is we train the dog <clears throat> we ring the doorbell and when before the dog starts to bark we ask we redirect the dog to go either to his crate or to his bed we'll be talking about crate training in a little while but the crate is actually a safe place for the dog and it's a it's a place where the dog is less likely to bark what it does is it brings the dog away from the door where there's distance right there's distance away from the person at the door and it brings him to a safe place where he will be less likely to bark at the same time you avoid any accidents because sometimes some dogs like german shepherds they're going to rush up and they might you know give a little bite or two and that's not and you're going to end up with a bit of a liability so it's just teaching an alternative more appropriate behavior to the dog okay all right well we have one one last question all from right. tammy. tammy so she says she's a very expressive dog in alaskan mouth oh. um the dog okay. always cries and makes sounds non-stop at intervals um they try to call her name or even try to make her keep quiet but she cries even louder um, she's not constricted in small space or she, she's not in any discomfort. Um, you can call it up and say, but it's getting annoying. So what can Tammy do? Okay, I need more information because I can't really tell uh, what's, what's making your dog bark. You need to let, let me know what time, uh, what time of day this happens and what's going on uh, that, that, that starts the dog barking. It, does it happen the whole day or does it happen at night, right? Because Malamuse, uh, Malam youths and many many dog breeds they like being around people a lot you know? and when you leave them alone in a room they don't like it they get lonely and they start howling or they start whining and then when people come that behavior gets rewarded because they got what they wanted right so when you when your dog is barking or howling or whining and then you you come into the room that rewards the behavior so the dog will always do that whenever it wants your or maybe they need to bring the dog to better dog. Yeah, <laughs> yeah they can come here. I think it's better if you come here, then we can have a little discussion of, uh, and you can tell me more about what's going on with your dog. Okay, yeah. Then we can, I think we, we, we can move on to the, the crate training. Okay, crate training. Okay, so for crate training, uh, I, I did mention crate training uh, earlier. Uh, many people have said, uh, look at the crate in, in, in the wrong way. You know? they, 
they look at the crate as like a cage for the dog, but actually, if you truly understand what crate training is about, it's really about giving your dog a bedroom. It's a, we call it a bedroom for the dog or a safe place for the dog because by nature, dogs actually like being in a small confined space. That's why they buy like wolves, they like dens no? that, that are dark and small and snug. So crate training is actually one of the best management tools that you will have at your disposal if only you would take the time to crate train your dog. So uh, just to uh, show you exactly what I'm talking about. This is what, uh, sorry, this is a newspaper. This is a crate. This is a crate. This is called a plastic, it's a plastic crate. Some people call it a camera. And uh, they come in different sizes. No? There are small crates, there are medium sized, large crates, and there are extra large crates. So, uh, currently, what uh, this is really, really useful for is when you're shipping a dog. When you buy a dog overseas or when you buy a dog from uh, a region in the Philippines coming to Manila, they need to be shipped in a crate and your dog really needs to be comfortable inside a crate. So uh, one of the things that are important to understand is the dog, whenever you introduce a dog to the crate, it must never feel uh, that it was trapped inside the crate. Okay? Like I said, it's not a, it's not a cage. So um, whenever we start crate training, we always start by making positive associations with the crate. And that begins with feeding the dog. All the dog's meals are fed inside the crate. What we'll do is we'll put the dog bowl inside, all the way in the back, all the way in the back of the crate, and then the dog gets to eat there. We never, we never close the door behind the dog in the early stages. No? We just want the dog to be comfortable inside the crate. Sometimes what we'll do is we'll tie their chew toy or bone inside the crate, we'll throw in their toys inside, and uh, they can feel free to go in and out. They'll play with their toys inside, and they'll have a nice, they'll have a good time being inside the crate, okay? So, um, yeah. So then, once the dog is comfortable going in and out of the crate, uh, next thing we do is we teach the dog, sorry, once the dog is comfortable being inside the crate, the next thing we do is we teach the dog to go in and out of the crate on command, no? So, I'm gonna ask my, uh, my senior trainer, Elsie uh, Flyder, Elsie wants to come over, and she's gonna be here with her dog, uh, Sheba. Sheba, Sheba, come here. Yeah, Sheba is uh, a rescue dog from Paws. Okay, there you go. See, she sees a crate and immediately she goes in. Because, you know, Sheba is a rescue dog. She's, many rescue dogs are very shy dogs. They almost always need a, a place to hide. They like uh, hiding in, in places. And so she took to the crate very, very quickly. You know, served her purpose. But, so, like I said, uh, She's been conditioned to the crate. She likes being inside the crate. So what we really need to do is to teach her to go in and out. Can you get Shiba out? So one of the first things we do when we start training is, can you ask her to sit first? One of the first things we do when we start training a dog, uh, like I said, is to go in and out. So to teach a dog to go in, we get a piece of food. Of course, nice food that your dog likes. Uh, food like, uh, uh, what we use for training is liver. This is boiled pork liver and we, oops, we dried it. Oh wow, look, you didn't get it. Yeah. And we warned you about it. So, we use uh, uh, boiled liver, boiled pork liver. And what we do is, or sometimes, sorry, we also use hot dogs, tender juicy. Okay, so what we do is we throw a piece of food inside, all the way to the back of the crate. Of course, the dog goes in, gets it, and then as soon as the dog turns around, we give the dog another piece. Okay. Yeah. While her head is inside, we don't. There's a barrier here. We always try to keep the dog inside, and then we say, "Okay, free, free, Shiba free." Good. Of course, initially the dog will free itself and say it doesn't want to stay in there for too long, but because Shiba likes it, she tends to lounge. Okay, so we do that a couple of times. Yes. And then I'll give her another piece. When she turns it off, I'll say free. Good. If your dog 
regardless of what will come out of the pig, we can also reward when the dog gets out of the pig. So going in and out is really what you're teaching the dog. And when you get to the point where your dog is already offering the behavior, she goes into the crate by herself, she already knows what you need. She already knows what you're trying to teach her. And she's showing you by offering you that behavior. And that is the time when you start adding the cue. Okay? The cue or the command. Right? So, if we... So, when you add the command, all you do is say the command first. Uh, whatever command you want to use, we can use kennel, we can use straight. What is inside? Inside. So she says inside. Okay. So we say inside, and then we throw the food into the crate. So we say inside, throw the food, she gets the food, and we continue rewarding when she turns around. And say free. There we go, she Inside, throw the food, she goes in, and reward her again. And free. Good. Free. Go. Inside. Yes. And then reward. And free. So now I'm not throwing food anymore. I just say inside. Dog goes inside. And gets and waits for her treat when she turns around. Yeah. And being very careful to keep the treat, to give her the treat when she, she's inside the pig. I don't want any part of her body extending outside the pig. Because I'm an anal obsessive compulsive trainer, right? And so I want my dog to be nice and well inside the food. I say, free. You want inside? Yes. And then I reward. Okay. And I say, free. So then I now have a dog that knows how to go in. <laughs> okay. That knows how to go in when I want her to go inside. So what I'll do next is, free. Come on. Show me. She back inside. She go inside. I'll close the, the the crate door and then I'll feed her. I'll feed her into the crate door and then I'll, let, I'll open it and let her out. So I'm introducing to her the idea that sometimes that door is gonna close and it's perfectly fine if that door is closed because you're gonna get a treat and it's gonna open quickly right after. Okay? You see? She back treat. One more time. Inside. Close the door. Feed through the door. And then open the door. Feed. Good job. So after a while, dog's really used to the door closing behind it. And it's just going to do exactly what she was doing. So she went inside. I'm free. Inside. I'll close it. I'll open it. And then I give her the tree. Free. Inside. I'll close it. I'll open it and then give her a treat and let her out. Free. So now the dog is used to being uh, sent into the crate, door being closed behind her, and there's no problem. The dog never feels trapped. Then, slowly, we teach her to understand that that door can be closed for a while. So from there, we progress to Get some food. She must free. I'll send her inside. Inside. I'll close the door. 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, 5,000. I reward her treat and then free. So the dog now knows to stay inside the crate for five seconds. Once she knows that, inside. I close the door. 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, 5,000. 6,000, 7,000, 8,000, 9,000, 10,000, I reward free. So for five seconds, I trained her to stay in there to 10 seconds, and then so on and so forth. Now let's try 15 seconds. Inside, close the door, lock, 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, 5,000, 6,000, 7,000, 8,000, 9,000, 10,000, 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, 5,000, 6,000, 7,000, 8,000, 9,000, 10,000. And then I open the reward. And then I say, free. So at, at, at no point during her training did I ever make my dog feel trapped inside the crate. Because the crate is supposed to be a fun place. It's a nice place. I never wanted to think negatively of that. 
And when you're using this, with, when you're training your puppy, you can actually put your crate inside the playpen that I talked to you earlier about. And let the puppy, sometimes you see the puppy or the dog will go in by herself and sleep inside the crate. And that's when you know that your puppy actually likes the, the crate. And then, after that, I'll see what else we do. I'll, I'll call Elsie to help me. After the dog is now comfortably going in, staying inside the crate, what else can we do? What else can we do? We can teach her to find the entry of the crate. So to find the entry of the crate. Okay. So and how, how, how do you do that? Well, we can start out with... She goes free. Free. Oops. <laughs> free. We start out. She goes free. Come on, Chris. Come on, Chris. Put her in the dog. Put her in the dog. Yeah, you can. What a good girl. So, smooth this out a little bit. Alright. And then she doesn't this way. This way. So, so, from there. So, she's to the side of the crate. And I'll just. Or, say, or to the side. Mm -hmm. There, there you go. Okay. And I'll just say inside. And then she learns to turn in, into the crate. She looks for the entry of the crate. And then? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then she gets a reward. Okay. Inside. There you go. There you go. You can do it on the other and side. And say free. Free. Okay, so from until this point, what we've been teaching the dog is to go into the crate from the front. So what Elsie is doing now is teaching the dog to go into the crate from the side. From that side and from this side. So let's do it also from this side. Let me get this chair up. Inside. And there you go. She gets the crate. There you go. And then, free. So from either side, also, from also from, from behind the crate. Ready? Ready. Yes, there you go. Yes, and then she gets the key. So, you know, working this way with your dog uh, makes it really, really fun. Makes training really fun for the dog. And your dog is really having a good time every time she's around or inside. Great. Then lastly, what else? We also teach the dog this time, right? So we'll put the crate here, and then, hi on Shiba, not yet. She really loves the crate. Yeah, Shiba, don't let them know that you know this already. Okay, so we we'll start building this time. So initially, you start by sending her here, and then later on, you move to sending her into the crate from this distance. Ready? Good. She goes in, then you throw in the tree. Yes. She so gets it inside, and then reward. So you do this several times. Many times you can't catch up with your dog, so you need to be able to throw it inside. Yeah. She so just throw free. it free, and then you build distance by sending her further. Now, if you notice, what Elsie is doing is she's holding Sheba by the collar, right? Mm -hmm. And when she, before she sends Sheba, she's saying, ready, ready. ready. What it does is it it revs up your dog, right? It makes the dog ready because your dog really wants to go ready, but you're holding her back. So you're building that drive to go inside the crate. Look at Shiba, look. Ready, ready. Move her a little bit over Sam. Show her ready. Go, go. So, there you go. And she throws a treat. Why are you not seeing Can we show it again? Free. Shiba, free. rocket science. No? Crate training is so, so easy. Uh, anybody can do this. You don't need to be a trainer. A lot of our students uh, get this uh, really, really quickly. Okay? So. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, before I forget, 
when you're not training, if you're still in the training, uh, in the training stage, always close the door when you're not training because your dog is probably, your dog might go in thinking that the game is still on. It goes in, doesn't get a reward, then it gets depressed because it didn't get a reward. Okay, so when you're done training, always close the door. Okay, so that's pretty much it for paid training. I hope, uh, I hope you guys uh, got a little bit of that. I hope you got a little bit of uh, toilet training, and I hope uh, this will help uh, improve the lives of your dogs. So, actually, Jojo, we have one question. Uh, someone uh, actually. Uh, Andrea asked if uh, the older dogs can still be crate trained. Yes, yes. Older dogs can still be crate trained. Any dog, any dog that's healthy uh, can always be crate trained. Okay? Anything else? Yeah. Um, Actually, there's one, one John just put, uh, posted a question. Okay, John. So he, he mentioned this dog's a picky eater. She doesn't like any treats. Okay. Is there any alternative reward that he could give when she's being trained or does a good deed? Okay, so picky eaters, okay? Uh, a dog is a predator, no? and food ranks number one in its list of priorities. So when a dog comes into our training center and the owner tells me that it's a picky eater, Immediately, I know that number one, there's something uh, wrong medically or there's something wrong uh, behaviorally. No? There's either a medical or a behavior issue going on. And usually when your dog is like that, uh, it's very, very difficult to train with anything, with food, with toys, or with anything. And what we do is we try to resolve that issue first before we start any training program. Okay, so if you have a dog that's a picky eater, uh, it, it all goes back down to feeding the dog, how you feed the dog, allowing the dog to eat whenever it wants to eat, or uh, allowing the dog to demand what it wants to eat. That needs to be seriously resolved. It is a serious issue, so uh, that's something you need to come in for a consult. Yeah. Okay. Well, we have one last question. Okay. What about if people don't have crates at home? Can some of the principles that you thought you know, apply to you know, for them training their dogs, or is it really required that they have a crate? <laughs> well, it's, uh, my first instinct is to say it's hard to, to crate train when you don't have a crate. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, uh, what, <laughs> uh, okay, well, a crate, uh, okay, if you, you, maybe you don't have a crate, but maybe you have a playpen like this, right? You have a playpen like this. Uh, some play pens, like this particular play pen, actually has a door, right? It has a door, so you can use this as a crate. You might need to set up a, uh, you might need to set it up a little, maybe put some flooring and, and uh, a cover on top, and it'll be a, a crate. You could probably use a refrigerator box, if you have a large box, and teach the dog to go in and out of that. See, what is really important is that the dog or the puppy overcomes the fear of going inside uh, a box, right? Going inside the box and then maybe putting uh, something in front of it, okay? But, yeah, the, the, the crates someone today are very cheap. Right? You can get a crate for as low as 2,000 pesos, I think, or something, for a, a made in China crate. So, it shouldn't be very hard. Okay. okay, that's it. That's it? Uh, well, thank you very much, Sir George. Oh, wait, I want to talk some more. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's no. But uh, yeah. guys, thank you so much for um, for watching, for posting your questions at the uh, Pet Parenting. Yeah. Um, well, thank you again to Sir George and, the, and to the Better Dog team. Um, if you guys have any questions, feel free to post them below. I will share this live video so that people who didn't join the live broadcast will be able to watch the material. Um, again, the, the website is betterdogph.com So in case you guys have any questions or you want to schedule trainings for your dogs, please feel free to get in touch with them. Um, for all other concerns, you know, just post your questions, send us messages, or we'll, we'll gladly answer them. We also have a grooming salon. It's one of the better grooming salons that you can go to. Um, it's a large, nice grooming salon. So uh, if you have any grooming requirements, please come. We also have a hotel. We have the largest hotel in the country for dogs. Uh, 
And if you need to go on vacation, you need to leave your dogs, we'll gladly take care of your dogs for you. All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you.